friends? I've been getting a lot of questions from you on how I make my stencils. In today's video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to transform this homemade pattern into a homemade stencil. Friends, the basic items that you're going to need to make your own homemade stencil are paper, projector sheets, scissors, sharpie, and a pencil. Let's get started on the first uh, stencil. The first stencil I'm going to try out here and show you will be the face to the little gingerbread girl that I'm going to be painting in another video. What I did is I just took one of these rounds from the Dollar Tree and I set it down on a piece of paper and I took my Sharpie and I just traced it because I knew that this was going to be the size of the head of my uh, little gingerbread girl. Okay, then I drew the eyes and then my nose and then the mouth and it doesn't have to be perfect you know that it's, it's gonna all work out alright so you've got your basic pattern on a piece of paper let's see here so then all you have to do, and if you've got projector paper that you can put through your copier, you can just copy it right off of your printer or your copier. Okay, and friends, the projector paper, uh, we looked it up on Amazon. You can get a box of 60 sheets for $13. That is a bargain. Uh, you might even want to get with your one of your craft friends and split the cost. But now you can price check it at uh, Office Depot or Staples and see and compare prices. But we live out in the country and we use Amazon a lot because we like our packages delivered. I'm telling you, I have the link in the description. Oh yeah, we'll put the, the link in the description. I'm going to turn this around for just a minute so that I can trace it. I've got my projector sheet and I'm going to trace my pattern. And I don't get things right the first time, friends. As you can see from my little sample here, I uh, draw and erase, draw and erase, but I had a visual picture of what I wanted my little gingerbread girl's face to look like. Okay, so you've got the face. Now I'm just tracing the eyes. Okay, so on this particular um, pattern right here, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna trace the nose and the mouth. Reason being that they're too close to the eyes for you to paint when you put, them, put it onto your styrofoam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to come down here and trace the nose. So you're using the negative space of the projector film to add more stenciling to. Yes. There you go. And that I just, uh, you can, if you want to, uh, just to measure, you can just Make you those little lines right there. Oh, well, you have some sight. Mm -hmm. All right. Then I've got a little pair of sharp tip little fiskers, and I've had these for a long time. And friends, I guard these with my life. Let me tell you, I don't let anybody use these for anything else other than me using them to cut my stencils with. All right. Usually, the big part though. I just grab a pair of scissors
to cut, cut around the, the circle. Okay, after you cut your circle out, it's time to cut the eyes. And I usually give it a little pinch. In the middle see there's a little pinch and I stick my scissors right in the middle of that pinch and then I start to cut Okay, so you've got your eyes. That was too easy. All right, now with this little extra little piece right here, I'm just going to cut it. Get rid of this excess here. Friends, if you're making a lot of these at the same time, it's so much easier to use um, a stencil. Saves on time, and all your projects will look the same. Perfect. And so you did this on a separate piece for structural rigidity, right? Yes, so that they... Because the, if you had done it all in one circle, it would get real flimsy on you. Well, not only that, it's when you, start to, when you start to paint them. Okay, so you've got your black on the eyes. Mm -hmm. Let's say, okay, you've already got your black on your eyes right there. And then it's time to put the red. Well, when you shake the glitter of the red, it's going to fall into your black eyes because it's too close. So it's better to keep them separated. I see. Which I could have done the eye. You could have done the eyes and the mouth on the same one, and I should have done that. But I've just, this is how I've, <laughs> I did the original one, so I'm going to keep on going. And the same things, same thing with this. Just nip it. Projector, you can't break this, really. It bends very, very well. Just give it a little nip. to give you your start. This gingerbread girl is so cute. I'm so excited to, to show you how cute she's gonna turn out and how easy it is to get her all decorated. All right, so there you have your nose and your mouth and you have your eyes. You have your stencil. Friends, I just wanted to mention something on the peppermint stencil. I got a lot of questions about it. Um, I failed to mention a couple of things, so I'm gonna show you exactly how I went about it. I took a styrofoam round, and again, because I knew that was going to be what I was gonna use to paint the peppermint on and I traced it. And then, friends, I started looking around, wondering what I was gonna make the little curves with, and I just grabbed a plate from the kitchen cabinet, and I just kinda looked at, eyeballed it in the center right there, and drew a little dot. And from that dot, I just kinda did this number on my plate. And it's not perfect, but good gosh, it was so easy and it made the little peppermints look so cute. And it was quick to do. Let's see. But I did fail to mention a couple of things, which I will tell you here in just a few minutes. Um, let me see, here's another one right here. I know I could have done this with a, what could I have done it with, the protractor? Or a com compass? Well, that doesn't look right. You're missing a pie. Oh, right there. Right there.
Okay, so again, grabbed my projector sheet. Traced it. Ah. Friends, I failed to mention that it gets really flimsy in the middle, so I didn't go all the way to the middle. I took a piece of tape and put it right in the center of the front and also the back just to give it some stability and friends I didn't cut all the way to the center kind of did that because if you cut all the way to the center, you're not going to have a connection right there. And your, your paint's going to go underneath. Um, you're going to have paint underneath your stencil. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> okay, same thing. And another thing I wanted to mention to you, friends, I draw a lot of my own uh, patterns, whether I see it somewhere or... I visualize it in my mind. I draw a lot of my stuff, but anytime I'm working on a craft that I'm showing you and I have a pattern for it, I will always include it in the description box. So just keep that in mind. If you ever see one of my videos and I'm working on something, I will share the pattern with you. And we try to get a list of the um, uh, supply list on there as well of the items needed. Oh yes, I didn't bring them up here. Another thing I wanted to mention to you friends, um, slick paints. Slick paint is a fabric paint and you'll find it in the fabric paint department at Walmart, Michaels, and Hobby Lobby. But if you cannot find slick paint, and the reason I use slick is because it's very shiny, it's a 3D paint, and it acts as, a, as an adhesive when you're trying to layer glitter or any kind of accessories to a project. Um, I usually try to find it at Walmart because I think it's cheaper now that they don't have a coupon at, Wal at uh, Hobby Lobby. But anyway, if you don't or if you can't or are unable to find slick paint, you can use the brand Puffy. Puffy paint, the only difference is that I find, in my opinion, it's just not as shiny and it... Uh, it takes a lot longer to dry, in my opinion. So that's why I always use the Tulip brand slick paints. Okay, there you go. And see how it's stable in the middle? And I know that when you paint it on here, it's gonna leave, it's not gonna connect them, but that's where you go and you put your little embellishment on it. Okay, friends, I hope you learned something today and I was able to share something with you. Until next time, see you later. Thanks for all your love and support.